we're continuing the exploration of Kehinde Wiley's style self-portraits. So we shared this video previously um, of how we came up with the grid and then we created a plastic sheet with the grid on top so that we can cross off squares as we do them. What I'm having students do is handle each square with a different media and we used a matrix to kind of uh, remember what it is that we did. So I've completed about 20% of the image. We've got 10 squares down, uh, eight squares across. So any square where there is nothing in it, we can do anything. Um, so we've got quite a few that were kind of blank. And then we have some squares that have a little bit more detail in them. Uh, so those have been handled uh, differently as well. Now I encourage my students to try a few simple cells or simple squares to kind of begin. Uh, and then that way they can kind of get familiar with the process. And then we started working row by row once they felt like they were more comfortable. Uh, we talked about how difficult squares with lots of details should be broken into smaller squares. So this one was handled realistically all in pencil. Um, whereas a simple square like this that just kind of showed a little bit of stubble was done with acrylic uh, and handled this way. In order to remember which way was up, we numbered the squares on the back with the matrix. So this is C7, so it was labeled C7 on the back. And it's upside right this way. So all we have to do is turn it around and we know which direction is up. So uh, some of the different things that we've done, um, we've got a square down here uh, that's F9 that was done in duct tape. We've got this one, uh, which is C10, uh, that was done on top of a pattern. So it's cross hatching on top of a pattern to create that one. Uh, and then there's some chalk included in there too. Um, this is just a pattern. This one we left white with just a little bit of a corner of the first beginning of the pattern. Uh, white on black. Uh, we've got gray paper and black paper available to my students. So you could see all of these different techniques. This one was kind of fun. We actually took a magazine image. You can probably see a hint of lips there and those are some nostrils. So it was a magazine image of a face that was then painted on top of, but in such a way that you can still see some of the image below. Because magazines tend to be very, very thin, uh, we glued the magazine image onto a thicker piece of white paper uh, so that it was easier to kind of paint with acrylics. And then we have some gold paint pen on there. So we could see cross hatching, we can see stippling, we can see lots of different techniques happening uh, across the board here. The other thing that I've encouraged students to do is when they're working on one square, let's say it's this particular square here, so they're isolating, you know, C2, uh, then I encourage them to have the ones that they had done previously so that things would kind of line up. So we've got the edge of the head and a little bit of hair here, and then some of the pattern that goes into the face. So by having these squares near there, we know that the transition of the image will be a little bit more cohesive. So we're gonna continue on and I'll have another video update as we get closer to the end of this particular project. I found it helpful to give students an envelope so that they can keep their squares in there um, and continue on.